Hey everybody, welcome to episode 13 of OA Wrestling. It is uh, Suki here, pretty much here to bring you through uh, this week a normal week. And uh, once and uh, once again, people for watching this live, yes, episode 12 is late getting out again. Unfortunately, unfortunately there, were, there were circumstances last week that delayed it, and then I went to Anime Week in Atlanta, so yeah, I couldn't... I, you, I couldn't work on it over the weekend, so it's it is done and it's gonna be put out either tonight or in the morning. So yeah, that's a yeah. So that's that's the thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And well, now to focus back on this week. Uh, this week, of course, joining me this joining me around will be uh, I got a couple people with me to talk about this week in wrestling. Uh, Going to start that off with Cole. It, I didn't really say all those things I said. Okay, and <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of out of it myself tonight. <laughs> it's like uh, it was national. I just talk. look. I, if you didn't get it, it was, it was the Yoki Bear quote. Mm. Yeah, it was National Coffee Day. Maybe I should have had more. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, also joining us would be. Uh, our resident retired wrestler, Chef Joe. The main reason why the podcast was delayed because the editor had suffered from a scratch cornea. They hurt like a motherfucker. Yeah. Had to go to the ER for it. Why are you itching? Why were you scratching your cornea? I did not scratch it. My contact lens did it. Get Cole, do you even know what a cornea is? Yeah, it's those things that you get stuck in your teeth after you after you go to the movies. That's popcorn, dumbass. All right, uh, and all right. Yeah. all right, and and making his return, making his return to the show after a couple weeks, we got AJ. I'm surrounded by idiots. Uh, it's just that, like your show. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, you, you just got to deal with them, AJ. That's pretty much how the world works. Yep, I've been dealing with Colt for how many years now? <laughs> and look where that got you. I took you. I took you to the top and then dropped you off. No shit. Uh, so. All right, so. Uh, yeah, last week was definitely more eventful because we were. Or wait, was last week the one? Wow, I completely forgot what last week's show was. Was last week the Night of Champions recap? Yes, it was. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was. So, that shows how much we give a shit about wrestling right now. No, I'm, I'm literally just that out of it that I'm like, wait a minute, fuck, what was my la what was the last episode? <laughs> the uh, last episode was when you were announced as the new champion. That's right. Oh, that's right, yeah, because... Oh, oh yeah, because we did it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we yeah. did a thing for yeah. that. Yeah, he won or, the belt. Or at least I did. I did a thing, and uh, Cole and AJ haven't seen it yet, but Chef has. Yes, I have. <laughs> did you oh, actually take God. that picture? He took Just a picture. Yeah, I took a picture. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Anyway, um, so now focusing on this week, it's uh, pretty much continuing. Continuing the build towards uh, towards Hell in the Cell, uh, which you know, we talked about, which definitely would have talked about last week, how we got the return of Demon Kane, and I uh, I do, and I kind of want to go go with this. It I I will have to say this. I love I do love like I like I just love how pretty much asshole corporate Kane is now. Mm -hmm. Like Kane, uh, this episode like totally one eighty in my opinion on this storyline. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, because I mean, I liked it because yeah, at the beginning, and it was apparently an an you know an anonymous email saying that Kane was creating an unsafe work environment. So Stephanie and Trips pulled in. Oh, uh, what was her name? St what was her name? Was Heather from accounting or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh no, not not accounting. HR. My bad. Oh. Yeah, they pulled in somebody from HR to pretty much do an evaluation of Kane by observing him through the night, and it's and it's, and uh, there was just some great moments from that. Like, uh, let me see, what was the one where 
I think early, early Wasn't on. Wasn't there one where like Kane helped? Sorry, Cole. You he's sorry, like Cole, helping you kinda, people. Sorry, Cole. You kind of cut out there. Yeah, you did. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Wasn't there a thing where Kane was like helping random people back backstage? Um, I don't remember that, but mm-hmm. like uh, I can't remember the first thing he did where he base where he almost where he kind of like started going a little like psycho on on Seth. Just just turn around and be like, "Hi, right, look. All right, let's get well, let's get going." Then um, there was later, but then uh, later, uh, Kane was talking to the HR person. Then Seth Rollins ca- came in, and and started talking. And uh, Kane walked off, to which Seth Rollins then turned to the HR person and starts like and starts going like, starts going like, oh come on, he he's such a he is incredibly menace. Do not believe anything he's doing. Then Kane comes back with a giant red box. Oh no, <laughs> giant red box with a bow on it. He's like, here, Seth. I got you something. He's like, oh, uh, what, what, what's in the box, Kane? It's like, come on, open it. What's in the box? So, so Seth opens the box and he looks really surprised. I was really anticipating another puppy for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But then, but then Seth pulls out of the box the severed head of the statue. That was destroyed by Sting a couple weeks back. Ah, so that's where it went. So and Kane does this whole thing where he says like, "Yeah, I, I went down to the I went down to the Baltimore uh, landfill and actually and actually got it back for you." And of course the of course that the landfill's H- huge. Yeah, and the H and the extra person's like, "Wow, that's so incredibly nice. <laughs> that's so thoughtful." And it just goes through this whole th- goes through this whole. Th- I think there was like one, one other seg segment with that, and then it was and then it was out in the ring where she was to an- announce her findings. Uh, Seth Rollins made a last minute plea to show how demented Kane is by showing a bunch of like, uh, classic Kane, like Kane footage where he's like, where he's truly screwing with people. Um, Kane then shows a package that shows uh, Seth Rollins being a whiny bitch. And after yeah. that, yeah. After that point, the HR person pretty much goes, goes. Kane is, Kane is a perfect employee. Kane is absolutely model WWE employee material. If I had a problem with anybody, it would be Seth Rollins. And it calls him insecure, paranoid, all the stuff. And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> basically, so, Seth Rollins. Yeah. So Seth Rollins then basically freaks out. And pretty much goes off on Kane. The still in corporate Kane mode, by by the way. Uh, he he pedigrees Kane, then goes out of the ring, grabs a chair, and starts beating the shit out of him with a chair. Mm-hmm. So Kane and is now dead. Oh, oh, and but and also does the finishing touch of taking the uh, previously injured leg, doing that classic thing where you put it through the chair. Yeah. Yeah, and then stop. Yeah, and then that's pff- very important for what comes. At, what, yeah. Yeah. Then stomp. Then he stomps on the chair, and essentially, it's supposed to like re-break the leg. It honestly well, doesn't really yeah, hurt that much. It's some bullshit. It doesn't yeah. hurt that much. Yeah, but um, he. So that happens. The train. The trainer immediately jumps into the ring, and calls for a stretcher. Mm-hmm. So they stretcher Kane out all the way into the back, and all the. And all the way, and they go. They actually put him into an ambulance. The whole time, Seth is now cutting a promo, basically saying, basically, say, you know, pretty much saying like, oh, "I told you, or told you, Kane, you wouldn't be able to pull." Did you think everybody was gonna be fooled? He's doing the whole thing, like kind of trying to praise himself, whatever. Well, the next time they cut back to, well, they cut back to. Actually, no, no, it was before they even cut back to the ring after Kane was loaded in. Kane gets loaded in. The the ambulance starts to drive off. Right before it cuts back, you you see. The ambulance suddenly stop, like the tires squeal and everything. Mm-hmm. So it just stops, and you're like, and it's, you pretty much get the attention of, wait, what? They cut back that they cut back, and the next shot, the inside, the inside of the of the ambulance is now glowing red and smoking. <laughs> so which then they turn, then they go back to the ring, they come back, and yeah, the doors pop out, and out comes Mast Kane. Which, what the commentary is like to call him Demon King. Demon King. 
Which, I, it was funny, because the first thought that crossed my mind was, how did they do that? And of course I realized I was an idiot, I was like, wait, he was probably wearing his, probably wearing his ring gear under the suit. Yep. And I was like, I was like, or, or honestly, like, they took him backstage, let him off, and then, like, put a stunt guy in the stretcher. Uh, I, maybe, but that, that was pretty hard since the camera was looking right at his face. Oh, it was it was him? Yeah, the yeah. Ca- yeah the camera showed him oh. get in there. They probably, I mean the the oh. the ambulance probably had the mask and his gloves already in there and everything, and so they just so they were able to just do that. Mm-hmm. But then but then uh, so Kane, Demon Kane pops out and he starts walking away from the from the ambulance. Which by the way, D- now Demon Kane is walking away, but he is walking with a severe limp on the leg that Seth Rollins hit. Pretty much that being the sign that yes, these are this is the same person. Well, yeah. So, well, Kane, the demon Kane takes a couple of steps and he looks down at his leg like this is not going to work. Lifts it up and stomps it on the ground, and after he does that, he just starts walking normally again. Yep. He's just sort of like you know what? No, stop that, and it stopped doing it. So Demon Kane then, or he just yeah, yeah. So Demon Kane is able to come out, and he just, and he basically goes down in the ring, and thus begins the, uh, thus begins the train wreck of of you know being more more beatings for Seth Rollins. Pretty much, like it was. Oh, yeah, it was Biggie supposed. To, Seth looked, yeah, yeah. I think it was supposed. It was supposed to end in a tombstone, but Seth got out of it. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, that. So... I, I do Seth look bad constant. Sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say that honestly, yeah. This so uh, well, I would say this and one other storyline are definitely WWE's best written ones at the moment. What's the other one? Honestly, the other one for me, I have to go with Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. Okay. Yeah. I think Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns is one of their best is one of their best stories going right now. I mean, and it's kind of funny because it's one of those things where, yeah, watching Raw last night, they made me realize how long it's been going on, and I've actually been okay and somewhat invested in the whole thing. Remember, this started at Money in the Bank. That's that's how it's been. It's been like four months for this for this whole for this story. Mm-hmm. And I actually think it's been playing out fairly well because of the story we got. You know, pretty much Dean Ambrose came into the fold. Luke Harper came back. Then we got another member of the Wyatt family. You know mm-hmm. that whole thing. Then Chris like, Jericho showed up for a night. You know, Jericho showed up for a night. Now, now Orton's involved. And who uh, knows what's going to come next? Yeah, I'll admit I do think I do think Eric Rowan would have been a better choice, but yeah, but. It, uh, I forget. Is he? Do we still know if he's uh if he's not healed up yet or not? He's still out of commission from what I'm aware of, but it's, there's no update on his status. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean that probably would have that that being part of the storyline more than likely would have been like the best move they could have done. But yeah, but since he what since they didn't have him available. You know, pretty much go with what you can. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, and really, and it, it, cause, yeah, because I mean, honestly, last night with the stuff between Bray and Roman, it really did kind of solidify why why the story is, you know, really progressing well. Because even though they, yeah, they had a match last night, even though it ended in a, in, you know, pretty much a no contest, or, or no, it was a double count out. Mm-hmm. But it's because these two are pretty much at that point where they are so, like, they are so focused on each other that yeah, they don't even. It's getting to the point where matches don't even matter to them. It's just all about being out there and just pretty much going after each other. See, and you know what's funny? This is the type of storyline between two individuals that sets up perfectly to hell in the cell. I was gonna get to that. And yeah, it does kind of make me wonder, will they go to Hell in the Shell, Cell? And, but it kind of makes me wonder, you know, Hell in the Cell is supposed to be designed to be 
you know, for feuds to end. But I feel like I don't want this to end. I want this to kind of continue a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, that's a... Yeah, and I can see that, but, I mean, I, I like, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to agree with uh, Yomi that this probably, this probably shouldn't go, uh, probably shouldn't go to, like, Mania next year, but, yeah, I mean, you could probably squeeze another, you could probably squeeze at least another month, maybe, maybe another two months out of this. Oh, actually, granted, they could have, like, something at Survivor Series, it could be uh, Team Roman versus uh, Team Wyatt, so. That is true, and... I mean, because yeah. really, all you have to do, keep doing, all you have to do for that is pretty much. After, I guess um, you know, with Hell in the Cell, you let you let it run with who they have right now, but then from that point on, or let me think, it's Hell in the Cell. Is Survivor Series the one right after that? Yes, I it's believe Hel so. Yes, it's Hell in the Cell, Survivor Series, TLC, Royal Rumble. Okay, well then, yeah, you can. Yeah, I mean, for that, since you've already got three and three. If you wanted to extend it to Survivor Series and make it the final, final thing, I'm sure they could. Sh I'm sure they could shove something else in there. Like, <clears throat> well, uh, those are that's already a three-person thing. I was gonna say Stardust and the Ascension. I was like, no, that's not gonna work. Um, make it six. Who the fuck cares? Actually, wait. Is it? A, no, it's usually a five-man team, but it's usually it's five. It's usually five on five, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind putting six on six. And they, granted, that could be a good opportunity for Eric Rowan to return too. Yeah, but here's well, yeah, I guess that that I guess what they could do is, um, I mean, because right now we got Neville with the with the Lucha Dragon. Uh, the Lucha Dragons are sort of like his help against the Ascension and and Stardust. I guess there could be some way that like going into Survivor Series, like one of the Lucha Dragons or or, or both of them get taken out, and then they got to scramble. And maybe and they, Chris and Mel returns. <laughs> Steven because Amell. he does he it does want to fight again and apparently that might be in the works. Huh. Hmm. Like you could do because you could do that and pretty much what it, you could kind of you could kind of have a repeat of um which one am I thinking? Not Night of, wait, no, it was Night of Champions, it was Chris Jericho. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. You could kind of have a repeat of the thing with Jericho, where it's like where it's you know Maybe we get the confirmation of one guy before, it, like we get like Neville gets brought in, gets like somehow Neville gets brought in because Stardust, the Ascension, gets somehow get brought into this, and then, then, but the, the Lucha Dragon, the Lucha Dragons are slated at, originally, but then the Lucha Dragons are taken out. Now, so you take that. Now you basically say, or you can have just one of the Lucha Dragons be be taken out, and like you keep that that person in the match. But now it's now it's pretty much we need a six guy, we need mm -hmm. to go six on six here. Pro probably because of one of those things where really somebody would say somebody would probably say, well, you could just have one of the mem you could put just have one of the members of Team Wyatt sit out and make it a traditional five on five. No, no. You you you'd want to build a six on six just because of the, the nature of this, and also because mm -hmm. really everybody that's involved in the match would be an active participant sort what sort of situation. It's not one of those things where you get where you're because I, I know in the past uh, in the past you know Survivor Series matches have been with managers being the leaders of the teams and stuff. Right. Yeah. Ooh, hey Suki, I know who's I know what, what, what you could do. No. You make both Lucha Dragons come out, then Enzo and Kaz debut, and that's it. Because I want them to come up. Because, uh, I don't know, Survivor Series is a place where people debut, apparently. Um, he, well, here's the problem. You're saying, Undertaker. Hey, yeah, I know, but here's here's the problem you're, you're we're saying there. If the Lucha Dragons are already in the match, they're six. So, for, I thought we were staying with six on six. Yeah, that's what, yeah, you said... Oh, 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 sorry. For some reason, I thought you... come out. For some reason, I... You, oh, when, well, when you say come out, I'm thinking they actually get out to the ring. No, no, I mean, when, when I say come out, I'm like, they come out of the matchup. My bad. Yeah. It, it's probably better to say things like taken out of the match or something like that. I don't know, but anyway, the... Uh, sorry. Yeah. But, um... I mean, that would be an option, because I can see that, too, if, if that that's an option, if you, like, both of the... If both if both the Lucha Dragons are taken out, 
because the other option I was thinking of was like you know, take out both of the Lucha Dragons. You know, if Stephen Amell was going was going to be put back into a match again, and they and they did it there, he could come in, and then they're still looking for looking for a sixth guy, and then you know surprise it surprise move. Here's Eric Rowan. Okay, yeah, that works. Yes, I I really feel like that should. Although the well, the problem is is that if you bring in Eric Ro- well, if you bring in Eric Rowan, and it, you do the Survivor Series thing where it's all where it all comes together like that, I don't know. Could you then? Could you at that point really have uh, Roman Reigns just fully, completely concentrate on something else? Because hmm. I guess Eric Rowan comes in and he's not, and I guess he becomes the target of Wyatt because it's like a betrayal. Apparently, like I, I was going to talk about this, like they're really heavily discussing who's uh, going to be Seth Rollins' opponent at WrestleMania, and Roman Reigns is being thrown around. I'm well, I can see. Well, I mean, I can see that because because Ro- Roman was just in the main event last year. Yeah, yeah, so it's like you're throwing his name around. They're throwing Dean Ambrose. They're throwing The Rock around, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, Honestly, throwing- I'm still I'm still thinking it's gonna be a fatal. I mean, not, not fatal. Uh, uh, a triple threat uh, with uh, Dean Ambrose and and Roman Reigns. I think that's probably the best way they could do it for this year's Wrest- I mean, next year's WrestleMania. Just have a triple threat with the members of the Shield. Because they're pretty much already gonna have uh, the Rock uh, have something involved with uh, Triple H, Stephanie, and Ronda Rousey. Ronda yeah. Rousey's not there. Her filming schedule basically prevents her from going to Mania. She said. Really. That's why she pretty. Much, I think she said that. Um, I was actually opening a story up about the Rock's uh, potential opponents at Mania, but I was waiting until we got off this before I start talking about it. But yeah. if you want right. to. Well, that's. Oh, that's, uh, so you got anything else to talk about? I mean, we could... um, let's see, because well, if, if you bring up if you bring up the Rock and whole thing, yeah, apparently it was recently all, recently also brought out that one of the plans was also supposed to be Rock versus Brock. Yeah, which, I still would appar- like to see that, yeah. but apparently that may appar- or I forget who reported it. It it might have been Dave Meltzer. Uh, Dave Meltzer. Yeah. Dave Meltzer may have reported it that that plan's been scrapped. Yeah, but uh, here's the th- uh, the thing. I'm getting an update that was put out yesterday. Was uh, we've noted how The Rock is not one of the possible opponents for Lesnar because it's now going. The big choices right now are Lesnar versus Taker and Lesnar versus Steve Austin, and like uh oh, and they wait. The Rock is not one of the possible opponents for Brock Lesnar at Re- WWE's WrestleMania 32 in Dallas. Now that Lesnar versus Undertaker and Lesnar versus Austin have been ruled out. Oh, they're not doing Lesnar Austin. Shit. Which seems uh, weird because there's a perfect. I don't. I'm I don't not know. Sure there's how seems- the Austin versus a Brock match would go. To be I don't know because there seems to be a perfect opportunity for that. And remember, on that on the on the st- on the podcast with uh with with Heyman. Remember, I think. Uh, Austin pretty much said he'd be willing to do one more match, but it's it's got to be the right guy. And yeah. he's set. He's pretty much stated Lesnar. Lesnar is one of those people. Yeah. Has a uh, has has uh, Steve Austin even had a match with uh, Brock? He I, stunned him at, at WrestleMania twenty. And that doesn't really count. That's just uh, he probably Stone did Cold at some does, point. does whatever he does that every Sunday, I guess. Like I bet bar. you he had something to do with like Stone Cold wrestled everybody. I'm pretty sure he wrestled. He did something with Rock Lesnar, I assume. Hmm. Uh, um, also, real quick, it turns out that Rock versus Triple H is still penciled in for next year. Yeah, uh, but uh, but it's like the mixed tag team match aspect probably won't happen because uh, I think Rousey's going to be uh. Due to movie equi- movie commitment, she won't be doing it, so we might just get Triple H versus Rock. Yeah, and, nice um, match, though. yeah and here's the other reason why I think why I think it would be something you could set up for Mania as Rock is I'm uh, sorry, Brock Austin, and that's I mean think about it. In, uh, is it two weeks? Two weeks he's going to be on the the Brock's going to be on the podcast. I sorry, don't remember exact. Uh, he asked well, if uh, Brock's going to be on the podcast in two weeks. Oh, I mm. yeah, Brock's yeah, Brock is going to be on Steve Austin podcast the nineteenth. So, 
Um, so one, two, th- so two weeks from this upcoming Monday. Oh. Okay. Huh. So, On my birthday. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna. So yeah, that that's gonna be a thing and. It's kind of funny because I'm pretty sure that they did that because you know Austin on the Heyman one pretty much said he he'd he'd want he'd want Brock on the on there, mm-hmm. um, but uh, that seems like a perfect place that you know you know the show obviously is supposed to be a shoot show that's one of those things it's supposed to be a shoot show like it's not supposed to come into it's not supposed to come into storyline but I'd say that I'd say that would be a perfect excuse to kind of just tease it. Like, it's like that's it's like when uh, Undertaker saw Brock Lesnar at one of his fights going, "Hey, you want to do it?" before they faced at WrestleMania 30. Hmm. Do you remember that? Actually, no. Yeah, there was a like Undertaker or Mark, whatever the fuck his last name is. Undertaker was at one of his uh shows and he was like talking to somebody and as Brock Lesnar was walking past, he just went, "Hey, you want to do it?" and Brock just like looked at him and like smiled and like kept walking. All right. Uh, what else do I got? We're done with yeah. I've also got other stuff waiting. If we want to talk about that, well, um, I guess we could get into what's going on with the Deepest Revolution. Yeah, we're uh, pretty much yeah. Paige is yeah. Paige is going back heel, and uh, we they teased that you know PCB would be able to cooperate again, and of course they didn't. It was right. bound to happen. Yeah, but um, that, I, I do kind of like what happened. What happened there is you know, Paige, Paige pretty much drops out. You know, decides to try and walk out on the match. So she walks out. Natalia comes out and pretty much is going to take Paige's place. Mm-hmm. And to which Paige is like, 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 what the hell are you doing? And pulls Natalia out, and they ba- they pretty much brawl. Yep. So. I guess this may, I guess this means the sub storyline in the Divas division right now is going to be uh, Natalia Page. Well, here's the thing though, I don't get about this storyline. Why the fuck did Charlotte and Becky not attack her on site? Were they uh, were they in the middle of a match? No, they were during during a Miss TV segment. The Bellas came in. Then they start arguing with them, saying, "You know, I I started this Divas Revolution, not you." And no, and it's like, no, Peep NXT started this. Since we're here for these people, and then Paige walks out, going, "Hey, Nikki, Bree, you guys just fucked your way to the top." And then uh, they got into a brawl, and then Paige and uh, Paige, Charlotte and so- uh, Be- Paige, Charlotte and Becky were in a three man, three woman tag match. I'm like, why are you trusting her? After what she did to you last week, you uh, morons. Well, I think it's one of those things where they, where in their mind they were thinking, well, at least we know Paige hates her too. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Honestly, that's kind of what it is. It's like basically, you, okay, I know, yeah, sure, I don't like you, but at the vi- at this very moment, at least we both have the same objective. Look how let's hey, remember WrestleMania twenty nine. Look how that worked out with Big Show, Sheamus, and Randy Orton. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying, but yeah. it's It, it never actually works out, but that's always the thought process going in. Mm. Just saying, that's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Alright. Alright, and um... But yeah, that, so... I get I, yeah because obviously yeah because I guess that's why I was saying that's the sub story in the divas uh, division right now because obviously the main thing would be uh, Char would be Charlotte versus uh, Nikki because Nikki's got the rematch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I do kind of think that we are that we are definitely on to another ru- title reign. I don't. I honestly don't think Nikki's getting it back. I, I, she had a very long reign. I think at this point, WB, WB absolutely needs to go ahead and just keep the title off her at this point. I, I agree. I mean, I mean, if there, if there's anyone to honestly uh, to get the top, get have a title run. Uh, honestly, if the 
the way how Paige is right now, I would say she's definitely going to try to get the title back, and then, who knows, maybe even Natalia will actually get a run with the title. Which I want to An actual see. run. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. And, uh, let's Is that, see. Should I, uh, I have some other WWE news. Oh, all right, Cole, go ahead. Talk about your new favorite guy. Huh? Your new favorite guy. New favorite guy. I think he's talking about the Heat Slater thing. Oh, I was, I was going to talk about that later. But, uh, no. I was going to get some stuff out of the way first. So, Fastlane got confirmed for being in, uh, Cleveland in 2016. Uh, so, that's I, the, that's so the, I should say... That's the February event, right? That's the one. Bef- that's the one that replaced Elimination Chamber. Right. Yep. Yeah. So that guy announced. So like they're keeping that. Then we got some interesting news that only me and AJ are gonna care about. So WWE is continuing the tradition of keeping SummerSlam in the same place for oh. the sa- for a set number of years. Yeah, I saw that. That they're ba- based. So, yeah, I did see that. Pretty much what they're doing is so, yeah, the uh, yeah, Cole. I can actually go go through on this. If I, if I know the story, I'm sorry, I guess this is something we should probably do going forward, but if I know the story and I can say something on it, uh, given that I'm, you know, I, I technically this is my show. All right, should, then, yeah. boss man. Let's see what you, whatever you say, yeah. Uh, it's one of those, it's, it's, one of, it's one of those shows, it's one of those things where, you know, I technically I'm leading the show in a way, but. Yeah. No, no, I was only going to say, I'm only going to say that, like, if you know a story, like, I'll let, I'll let you go, but I'm just like. I'm excited that like the press release says NXT, SummerSlam, and Raw are all booked like as like set dates. So this means Brooklyn is getting like multiple NXT events over the next few years, and I'm so pumped. Yeah, oh, that's boy. that's what that's pretty much what I was gonna say is that yeah they yeah so WB yeah WB scheduled for the next two years that we will get NXT Takeover, SummerSlam, and Raw as a weekend uh, for the next two years uh, in in the Barclays Center. This damn. I'm fu- I'm ecstatic, dude. This is awesome. AJ, how do you feel about it? I think AJ's the way. God damn it. Honestly, like even I I I might not even go to SummerSlam next year. Depending, I might just want to go to NXT. I might just save all my money and try and get front row seats at NXT. Oh, do what you want, Cole. Because like, NXT is so good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It was like, literally the best part of the weekend. Yeah. Oh god, you know what's This is the one week I can't talk about NXT because I forgot to watch last week's NXT. I've been Aww. forgetting to watch NXT too because my week my week's been so packed with shit. Yeah, well but, uh, it's yeah, cause it's also for the fact that, you know, NXT was Wednesday night, and then starting Thursday I was at the con for the big majority of my weekend. <laughs> so, Let me ask yeah. you something. Do mm-hmm. you think they're doing a I was gonna say do you think that this tag team like turmoil the turmoil tag team champion t- tournament sorry tournament I couldn't think of the word do you think that this tag team tournament going on for months is a good thing or a bad thing well I mean I, if, I mean if it's the thing about tournaments is that so honestly I, I mean I kind of enjoy longer tournaments in a way uh, because yeah it's something that's just going on there and it's it, it, it and it's in and it's a nice steady storyline that you can keep going for a while. That's which is nice. Um, the I'd say actually the best long tournament uh, that I can think of in that I can think of that I don't think the company does it anymore, which is kind of sad. My favorite thing of that was actually the Bound for Glory series from TNA. Bound. Okay, Bound for Glory. If I, I, I saw a few, I have a DVD of that that I have to watch well, still, but I looked them up. Well, because here's good. The, yeah, because well, because the idea of the Bound for Glory tournament is actually I'd say is real is what I I th- I really think is a perfect thing to pretty much have like all your guys that are set to be possible main eventers have them be active have them be have them be involved and and yet still keep them just out. Of the title picture for, for a while, and okay, it's because that was the whole thing. Is that I think I think the Bound for Gory series was like, it it lasted like what six months, or five, I, or it was like it was month it was a couple of it was quite a few months, and it was just ten guys, it was ten guys that pretty much would all have to face each other, I think twice. 
they had like everybody had everybody had to face each other in some way or another twice, whether it was tag team matches or singles matches or even triple threat matches. Uh, they had they had to do that, or even they sometimes did uh sometimes they would do like big like they they do like big like uh, gimmick matches like they'd had I think. Like they'd have ladder matches where if you won the ladder match you got like ten points, in in that, in the um, it had ten points in the Bound for Glory. It was series Bound for Glory series is what it was called. This reminds me a lot of NASCAR. Yeah, but it's but and and the thing was that every victory, like everything had a point value. Of course, if you lost, it was zero. You didn't get any, get anything. If uh, I believe if it was a tie, like a double count, a double count out or a double knockout, uh, I believe each guy got like three points. Uh, a pinfall victory was five points, and a submission victory was ten points. So it was kind of neat in that regard, to where yeah, like you got more points for submit for submissions and stuff like that. And, it, and like I said, it, like there was this thing that went on for month for would go on for months, and it was con- it was actually kind of neat to to uh, to watch it because it would it would resu- it would culminate at the pay per view before Bound for Glory, because that's w- the that's where I uh, I think they usually worked it out to where the where they would have like one oh wait what was it it was um. It was, it was a. Uh, oh no! It was a. It was a. Four, it was a four-man tournament at the pay-per-view before Bound for Glory. That's what it was. It was. It was the foot. The last four guys would go in. Would go into that pay-per-view. They. They. And then they'd wrestle a short. They'd wrestle a short. A single elimination tournament that night, and the winner of that night was the number one contender at Bound for Glory. Huh. And so then. So then you got that month. To build up the build up that storyline between that new number one contender and the champion. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I could. I mean, honestly, WWE could probably do could more than likely do something. Well, no, they couldn't do that for Mania because they already have the Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble is their way of do of deciding the challenger for Mania. Um. Oh, uh, what would oh. Oh, you know what? I know exactly what you do. I know exactly how you could introduce that. All right. That this is how you rebrand the Survivor Series. Ooh. You take this. You take this. A very similar concept to this, and now the Survivor Series has a whole different meaning to it. Like say mm. survive. Say Survivor Series. The, but the the whole idea of the like I'm gonna change the like it's you know the, it's the Survivor Series where yeah maybe it culminates at it once it culminates not so much like you don't do the whole four like four man tag at the or four man tournament at the end maybe it's just uh couldn't they just use the format for King of the Ring true they could they could do that but I think I think that might be might be you know, like King of the Ring was you know a tournament in one night and that was cool. Although yeah, that's oh yeah. The problem is that in WB, if you did that for like a one night tournament, the thing is that everybody would say, "Well, this is just King of the Ring. Why aren't you calling it King of the Ring?" Yeah, and granted, uh, we did see King of the Ring kind of made a return of uh, this year, and who knows, it might slowly come back as well. So, hmm, I I'm curious what King of the Ring could do if it does come back, just because I feel like it doesn't have as much prestige. But then again, like I want more wrestlers like Regal to win. That because it's a good way to transfer you from a wrestler to like a backstage person. Because it makes you work on your mic skills, and that maybe you can maybe work at being a GM or something, just like doing something like non wrestling. I think that's a good way to put it. Like you become a king, then you like get to work on your mic skills because you're the king, so you have to brag. That might help you work on like becoming an authority figure, which. Later in your career, you might be able to use that maybe on commentary or maybe like somewhere else, you know? Hmm. That's just me. Yeah. But it's uh, just. Yeah. What else know. we got? Are yeah. we done? Yeah, I think we're done on that. So basically, yeah. What? Once again, we've. <laughs> once again, we discussed something that came out of you know TNA's TNA's heyday where they actually did, had good ideas. <laughs> 
All right. So, speaking of TNA, oh. I have some news. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, I think, I think I know which one this is, too. <laughs> Lucha Underground officially releases Hernandez following TNA controversy. Oh, oh, never uh, mind. Okay, oh. Was it? oh, that was it. Okay, you, you were going to talk about, you were talking about a different thing. I was thinking... We'll get thinking... to your thing in a second. Yeah. So, I just want to announce this about how, basically, for those of you who don't know, Hernandez has basically been having a shaky summer with TNA about how he was not legally able to appear on TNA tapings in June, even though, like, he was supposed to be, like, free, but he was, like, really with Lucha Underground. And then, like, t- when they found out he couldn't, they had to, like, basically et- pick him out of TNA broadcast. Like, they had to basically, when they found this out, like, two- like a week beforehand, they had to go back and clean him out of it. So, Lucha Underground basically said, we're tired of your shit, and so they got rid of him. Hmm. So I just thought I'd bring that up. So, so why don't you say your TNA news then? Yeah, because I was gonna say, uh, I was gonna say the the saga that is that is Scott Steiner versus TNA took its next step. Oh, that. Oh, you want to bring that up? Okay. Yeah, that was yeah, because now the apparently the lawsuit that the lawsuit that TNA filed against Scott Steiner that will officially go to trial and. Given how slow the legal process in America is, yeah, that's not going to trial until February. Yeah. Is, now, here's the question. Is TNA going to have a channel by then? I really don't know. That depends yeah. if, if it's more in favor with uh, Scott Steiner. Eh, who knows? Actually, I have some more news on TNA. Okay. That came out today. Oh. PW Insider is reporting that internal schedules for De- at Destination America have been finalized through the week of October 22nd, and TNA Impact is scheduled to air every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. The report also notes that an agreement was made between the two sides to go past the initial 39 episodes. Dixie Carter re- recently told Sports Illustrated Impact will be on Destination America until February 2016. Hmm. So, they're safe for the time being. Yeah, so so they, I'm curious, this is just Dixie being Dixie, or if she's, I don't know. I don't know. No, because uh, I mean, at this, at this point, at this point, what does, what does Dixie have to gain by basically playing everybody? She's got, she, she's obviously seen the trouble that the company's in. She's got to save it. She, you know, she has to make her, she has to make smart moves at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. What else we got? What else we got? Uh, Sonny got arrested again. Does anyone even... Eh. She's like... I, I read her thing about how she doesn't care what WWE thinks about her because she, like, they have given her a check since 2009. But I find the reason she got arrested to be really bad. She missed three hearings for her May arrest, and she got arrested in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and she's now spending time in jail. Hmm. So, I mean... There's nothing more undignified than getting rest in a Walmart parking lot. That's very uh, white trash. It's very, very white trash. Yeah. Um, and, uh, also, sorry, what? Actually, there is something I kind of want to bring up. Uh, I mean, uh, you can continue what you want to talk about, Cole, but I think I got something else uh, kind of interesting. Uh, I'll let you go first because I have like a few more news stories I can go through before, okay. so you can go ahead. Okay, well, uh, I'm not sure if some of you guys uh, follow on NoDQ.com. Well, uh, well, the uh, the guy who uh, owns the uh, website, uh, Aaron Riff, he actually got blocked by JBL. Uh, Apparently, what he did was like he kind of jokingly. Okay, uh, uh, hang on, Chef. Chef, sorry, you're you're getting really bad on. Uh, for some reason, your audio is coming through really, really bad right now. Eh, uh, you, you know my mic it occasionally does that. Like this, honestly, I think this is different from usual. <laughs> Holy crap! Wow, I'm kind of curious what it sounds like now. <laughs> Can't hear me now. Yeah, it's still, it's weird. It's like staticky. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Maybe I should. Oh, there we go. Mic. Now it's good. I probably should turn in my mic or something for a new one, maybe. Hmm. But well, anyway, as I was saying, uh, the owner of NoDQ.com, Aaron Riff, uh, he hosts hosts a uh, show called uh, NoDQ. Uh, Q and A, uh, plug in, I guess. <laughs> uh, and he he tweets a uh, live he tweet live tweets uh, the show uh, of Raw, and he was he always always kind of pokes fun on JBL, and uh, he decided to tweet out uh, 
at WWE and at JBL. Hey, he didn't. He forgot to mention the award-winning WWE Network. And for that comment, apparently uh, JBL blocked him. And apparently, uh, he's been getting uh, a lot of uh, stories that a lot of people are being blocked by JBL. Huh. I I don't want to tempt it because I like looking at JBL stuff. I could. I can honest. I want to tell him. Hey, you know, I really like Brawl for All. He'd probably kill me. <laughs> I'm, kind uh, of, I'm kind of tempted to do that right now. Uh, what else do we? I mean, that's that's. Uh, JBL's a weird guy. Yeah. Yeah. I still haven't uh, actually. I still haven't sat down and watched that first episode with uh, Eric Bischoff yet. Yeah, I still have to watch it too. Uh, ooh, Suki, you're gonna like this. Hmm. So uh, NXT champion Finn ba- Balor recently took part in an interview with the uh, title match wrestling. And stated that instead of NXT talent talents competing at next year's WrestleMania 32 event itself, NXT NXT will be getting its own WrestleMania weekend event in the state of Texas. Hmm. Hmm. This is what Balor said. A lot of us believe we're completely separate from what they've been doing in the main roster, and some of us don't necessarily want to be on WrestleMania. We're going to be have our own card, hopefully the night before. We'll sell out a building, and saying to the boys, follow that. I can see that happening. Finn Balor is literally starting, like, a, a revolution. <laughs> he doesn't want to get called up. He doesn't want to be in the main roster at all. He, he likes NXT way more, and now he's just saying, fuck WrestleMania, we'll make our own WrestleMania. He, hmm. And once again, you know what that's telling me? Triple H is apparently doing something right down there to where people are like, I actually don't want to deal with that bullcrap. I don't want to deal with this six-year-old man who wants me who wants me to be covered in baby oil. Seventy. Sorry, seventy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's yeah. Just... Yeah, uh, that's... there's so like that just shows kind of where the company's going, and I kind of think that's a very interesting proposition. That do you think that an internal revolution like that could get Vince to step down if like people are actually saying? Look at what your son-in-law is doing that they don't want to work for you. Um, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a possibility because, I mean, really, really, then again, if you think about it, Vince, Vince has has always been pretty stubborn. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, before the Attitude Era started, think about how long it took for somebody to finally tell Vince, dude, or think about how long it took for Vince to finally accept that he had to change something. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably took uh, took a lot of convincing. Yeah. Oh, uh, if, uh, really quick. Also, I found this story stupid. I think you're gonna want to read it. Vince Russo said he like how he thinks Sting deserves better in w- better in WWE. He talked about how he and Sting came up with the Joker Sting uh, thing that you like so much. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in the chat for you, but I just found the timing of that to be perfect. Hmm. How we brought that up last week, and now you're like, man, I really like this time when Sting was just basically sitting on top of lockers and just being like a really creepy dude. Yeah. So I just thought you might like that one. Uh, what else we got? Uh oh, New Day is getting new merch, which is New Day socks, which I fucking called it, and I'm happy. They're getting <laughs> socks. Nice. Uh, oh, uh, WWE is playing a man- major Royal Rumble DVD and Blu ray, and it's going to be a documentary for 2016, which is going to be very similar to the true story of WrestleMania that, re- that came back in, 11, in 2011. Mm-hmm. It's going to focus on every Royal. Rumble pay per view since the event's inception in 1998, and it's uh, likely going to come out sometime in. Tw- That'd be yeah, I said 1988. I heard 98 for some reason. And uh, it's oh, that's weird. And it's going to be released sometime in 2016. Hmm. So, honestly, like that's going to be cool just because the Royal Rumble is one of my favorite pay per views. And it's not just because I'm going to say, "Ooh, 2004." Yeah. No, it's because like I want to see what they say, like how the Royal Rumble came to be. I think that's cool. Hmm. I think, and they're gonna probably talk about like how Hacksaw Jim Duggan won the first one for no fucking reason. Well, remember the well the first yeah. one. Well, remember the first Bro Rumble. In fact, I I think I don't think it was even the second one where it became a spot in WrestleMania. 
Because the first one was just for the title. The first one was... I thought Hacksaw Jim Duggan won the first one. Yeah, he did, yeah. Hacksaw Jim Duggan won the first... Or, wait. Yeah, because the first one, I believe, was just for the va- was just for a vacant uh, title. A vacant uh, WB title at the time. And, yeah, Duggan... Won, he... but, but Duggan never held the title. Wait. Then... Yeah. Wait, but I could have sworn there was a pro... Or did... Or did no, that the... was when... That was, that was when Ric Flair won it. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Was the Royal Rumble always the spot at WrestleMania? I don't know. I, I, don't I, don't know. Know. No, I remember the first one, Hacksaw Jim Duggan won, but he didn't win anything. I, don't, I think yeah. it was just like, I won it. I did it. Yeah, and also, of course, like, yeah, and of course, remember, I remember we were talking about, like, how the rules of the Royal Rumble go. We were talking about, like, how finishes it and all that, where part of the where part of the rules say that if there's a tie at the end where there's two guys get eliminated at the same time, you can restart the whole Rumble match. I th- the reason that's in there is probably from the first Rumble match where all 30 men were in the ring at the beginning. So, Royal Rumble match, Jim Duggan won by last in- eliminating the one-man gang. Uh, and I'm looking, he won it, and it didn't say he did anything afterwards. Okay. See. But appa- and they all started in the ring at the same time, I believe. Yeah, and the fir- on the first one, this I think it was yeah it was the second year where they came up with the uh, with the idea of the uh, staggered entries. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Two K sixteen is not gonna have career mode on last gen, which is, eh. It's been two years. I'm sorry. I get it costs money, but it's been two years. Like they're slowly transitioning. Yeah. Well. Uh. Well, I'm sorry. Well, granted, uh, Suki, you mentioned uh, hacksaw Jim Duncan, and apparently I just discovered this. Apparently, the first ever rum- Royal Rumble, it only had twenty participants. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. And the final bit of news I have is that uh, Mark Henry reveals who he wants to end his career against. Hmm. Oh. So, like you're rumoring to uh to end it. You can't hear anything, can you? Uh, I hear you. All right, good. No, sorry. Uh, so r- they're rumoring that Henry's gonna retire in 2016. He wants his final match to be super dramatic. No, be retirement match. He wants it to be against Dan O'Brien. Huh. I kind. I'm just kind of trying to wrap my head around it, and I'm just like. He huh. says that Daniel Bryan's like one of the best wrestlers he's ever faced against. He's never had a bad match against him. He's fun. He's good. He likes him. Hmm. All right then. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, can I? I honestly, the guy's old enough. I wish they could give him the WWE title, but they aren't. He's held every title except the main title. Like that kind of bothers me, but eh. Hmm. I kind of think that maybe if you need a throwaway like match, maybe put him in a title hunt as his retirement. That like you know, give him like title shots in his retirement age. I don't know. I I let's see what happens. That's all I got for news wise unless you guys have something else alright um we talked about Hornswoggle right actually no we didn't I don't think we did yeah I don't think we did so, yeah. yeah we did yeah. wait did or, we did mention? we bring it up at the beginning oh yeah we did I because don't... it was because uh, we did mention or or was that something we were talking about before the show I think it was before the show we might talk about before the podcast okay well right, so let's just if bring we, it up again if, if, we're, if we're talking about something again uh I apologize but well, but honestly, we weren't probably going to talk about this very much anyway. Mm-hmm. Cause... Yeah, Hornswoggle got suspended. Yep, 30 days. Kind of kind of out of nowhere, and honestly, what has Hornswoggle been doing lately? I honestly think he was just at, like backstage, and he said, hey, random drug test. And he's like, oh, shit, and it came out purple. Which, you know what purple means, right? Uh, Kool-Aid? Marijuana. Oh, my second guess was going to be Grimace. Yeah. No, it's just, I bet you, like, he was just smoking weed, 
he, it was maybe it was a week. Maybe maybe he didn't do it that day, but it was still in his system, and they random drug tested him, and he got caught positive. I honestly think that was it. Because hmm. that's like how like when you see a random suspension like this, I always think it's just a random drug test. Right. It, that's how it is. Yeah. I seriously don't think that uh, that uh, Hornswoggle's taking PEDs. Yeah, I don't really. See- yeah, I don't really see him uh, doing that. And like I said, I've just been... I mean, I know Hornswoggle was out for, like, a shoulder injury, and I'm just like, okay, he's out for a shoulder injury. That makes sense. And just kind of makes you wonder, what is he really doing these days with the company, other than, like, maybe some comedy stuff with the WWE Network? I mean, he's, he's been doing some uh, web shows, I think. Like, I think he's still doing the JBL show. That's still going on? Like, I thought I thought he I thought he was still doing like when it was still going on he was doing that but it ended it I think. Hmm. It's like other than Swerve you barely see him anymore. Pretty much. I, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry I've been kind of quiet this entire time. I just don't really have a comment on much because like didn't bother NXT. watching. I just didn't bother watching Raw. That's NXT okay. in Brooklyn though. Yeah. Come on, you like NXT. Of course I like NXT. I'm just... I'm not bouncing off the walls about it. Oh. Just wait until it gets closer. That's when they... Probably not. I'm not going to have the money. Oh, yeah. Well, I do know what you're going to be doing uh, next July. I know that, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, right. anyway, uh, uh, anything uh, else? Uh, uh, anything else? Like, let me see. I'm try- let me see if I can think of... I'm trying to think of anything else off the... Off, off actual raw that we can go into as well. Um, John Cena surprisingly teaming up with the Dudley Boys. Yeah, but, you didn't actually talk about that. Yeah. It was it, just like it, it was an out of nowhere. You knew honestly. I kind of expected New Day to rush the ring from the ho- from the highlights I've seen. Mm-hmm. I kind of knew. I'm like, yeah, they're gonna rush the ring. Are they gonna lose the titles the next pay per view? I would hope they lose the titles on Saturday. Please what's, give it to the what's, Deadlies. What's I Saturday? mean, it, it would it would make sense because uh, the Saturday is the uh, Madison Square Garden event. That's this Saturday. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Fuck. And it would make sense because you know the Dudleys they they are both from New York, and apparent and they've pretty much said and they pretty much said you know the you know it would you know that would be the absolute best for them to you know be get their you know get that that particular title win in that arena you think that they would do that and then they have this feud go to TLC where they have a tables match with them they it it could happen because I feel like this is all building up to a tables match I don't see why they would give it them the titles at Madison Square Garden then because it's their hometown yeah but then you do something at hell to sell and then like you're stuck because like, you gotta try and drive them just have the Dudleys hang on to the titles until uh, until TLC and then do the tables match. Yeah, but against the, against the New Day? It would solidify them. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. It's Beating weird, the like, Dudleys have... in a tables match, that's like winning. That's like breaking the streak. Okay, mm-hmm. okay, fine. You say, Okay, you're saying New Day beats them there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If the, if the Dudleys were to lose to the New Day at TLC in a tables match... That's solidifying them as a genuine tag team, like a really insanely good team. Yeah, but and also the only, uh, right now, the, the only thing entertaining about the New Day right now is just freaking Xavier running around with that damn trombone. I'm sorry, Biggie mm-hmm. is like I love Biggie so much. He's doing good too. I think the only dull one is Kofi Kingston's not good on his own, but when paired up with other people, he's funny. Like, yeah. he's too much of a straight man, but, like, when he's put up with, like, kooky guys, he can, like, tone his straightness down a bit so he goes, like, with them. But he's still got, like, that clean-cut personality about him. Hmm. Uh, by, by Lemon, why don't they save this for uh, SummerSlam in Brooklyn? They're not waiting a fucking year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. Um, let me think. Anything else off of Raw that would be of note? Because, let's see. Um, 
um, let me think, because we had, uh, let's see, because we had, oh, yeah, well, we had what honestly could have been a good match because he's, he had two pretty good competitors in this, and that was Rusev and uh, Owens. They put them they put them in a match because Rusev's pissed off at Owens to pretty much immediately turn into Owens uh, Owens causes Ryback at ringside to get pissed off and start attacking Rusev which then turns into Rusev and Owens team up one more time and just beat up Ryback. So hmm. pretty much absolutely no point to to that at all. Yep. But it's yeah. just, I think that's It's yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, we get we get it, we get it. Your your whole your whole, all your your plans with the whole Lana Ziggler and Rusev storyline that got fucked up because of the injury. Just, get, I don't know. They, there's 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 got to be something they can do in the meantime because. And there's no way that they can keep Rusev and Ziggler going until Lana can come back. Yeah. Nope. Oh, actually, so curious to me, I want to bring up to you real quick. Hmm. Did you notice that during the Diva segment, uh, Foxy literally went like, look, girls, three is greater than two. Yes, I did. Okay, good. I want to bring that up real quick. Sorry for derailing, but like my ADHD just kicked in. I was like, "Wait a minute, I need to bring this up to you." Hmm. Yeah. So, let me think. Other, otherwise, it's because normally at this point I would go back to NXT, but like I said, I forgot to watch last week's NXT. Uh, let's see. I honestly think that's it. Yeah, honestly, I think we're good too. Besides, we're pretty much about we're right around our hour mark anyway. So, yeah, mm. I, I'd say we're pretty good to go ahead and wrap things up. So, yeah, you know, kind of, you know, we're it's really just the, it pretty much we're in the second week of build. We've got two. Uh, let me think. We we've got at least two more weeks of build because I think uh, Hell in the Cell is is that the twenty? Yeah, I believe that's the twenty fifth. I think so too. Cause yeah, cause I think that's that's one of the reasons why the Brock appearance on the podcast is uh is uh the nineteenth because it's literally the Monday before uh, Hell in the Cell. So so we still got yeah you know, one two yeah we still got three Raws between at least, that, yeah. Be, yeah between now and and Hell in the Cell so. Really, yeah, they've got some interesting builds going, but obviously they don't. Obviously, they haven't, you know, they haven't had a chance to really ramp up on everything yet. So that honestly, I think next week will probably be in. Next week will probably have an, a similar thing to this week, where it's just kind of like, all right, things are sort of in a holding pattern. I think I think in two weeks is when we're going to start having more stuff to talk about. Yeah, but at least I can see this is definitely going to get some good build up. Yeah, so. Oh man, I'm actually tired tonight. Holy crap! I really should. I really should have gone and gotten some coffee. Coffee on my way home. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah. All right. So yep. Yeah, so we're so yeah. We're definitely done for this week. Uh, but as far as yeah, and just to take us out, let's go ahead and go around go around the table and. Let everybody know where the where the lovely people on the internet can find us. Starting with Cole. You can find me on things at, at Cole Train Forever. Yay, Chef. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter uh, at uh, Joe Off the Island, and you can find me on YouTube and DeviantArt uh, Chef Joe G nineteen. And uh, hmm, kind of interesting. I, I'm not the one who's going to be saying uh, take it away, Suki. Uh, AJ, you're next, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Punk Gamer. The E is a three. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much about it. And, and rally and watch the and watch the uh, broke podcast. Yeah, no one's gonna watch that. <laughs> Not with that attitude. Yeah. Well, I'm just stating facts. Yeah. Ah. Well, rally. Do you have anything to add to this? Hooray! <laughs>
Well, <laughs> she, she's not in heat, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, so. <laughs> all right. So anyway, that's yep. That's that's all for this week, you guys. Uh, thank you for coming out, and I, I've <laughs> once again this week. I really want to work on getting this thing out out faster. Hopefully, this is the first. Hopefully, this is the first week we'll have in a while where nothing, yeah, you know, where nothing freaking goes goes batshit wrong. Don't worry, I'm not wearing any of my contact lenses, so yeah, there, yeah. there's no way I'm going to the ER again. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to address our chat, Yomi, no, Rally didn't meow. She she decided not to say anything. Of course, at that point. Thank you, huh. Rally. Yeah, but um. All right, so yeah, so I'll I will definitely work definitely work on getting this episode out much faster. I'm gonna get episode twelve out either tonight or in the morning, uh, right after this recording. So, but with that, we're done. Thank you so much for coming out, and we'll see you all next time on OA Wrestling. Bye. Bye. <laughs>